Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. As you can imagine, today is all about the Halo Elite Four Burner Griddle. You guys have asked, we have listened. To be honest with you, I'm kind of excited. Let's see what she can do. A few disclaimers up front. We paid for it ourselves, so there's that. So, um, but. I will say this going forward, we get a ton of comments, review this griddle, review that griddle. We're done for the season. Like unless something just crazy happens out of the blue, we're done. Um, we got enough. I don't, I don't even have enough space as it is. With that being said, let's make this video all about the Halo Elite 4 burner, okay? Uh, just being up front, it was a disaster putting together. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, uh, especially with today's technology. Um, it just seemed like it should be easier to put together. It wasn't, but I'll give a shout out. If you want to see a video of how to put this together, you can look at Tommy, the gallery backyard barbecue. He actually did a video of how to put this together. And I'll encourage you, if you want to see exactly how to put it together, you can watch him. Cause I can guarantee you, I use way less cuss words than he did or more cuss words, whatever it is. I had a horrible time. It, how long did it take us? Like two Brutal. hours. And I will say this, a lot of people do these scan things, right? So by the time this video posts, unless we're just both, uh, naive or just internet um, illiterate once you click on it it just takes you to the home page it doesn't take you to like a startup guide or how to we couldn't find anything of how to put it together i will say this though once it started going together everything went together a lot easier it's just the legs that give you a little bit of trouble the way i like to do things i like from go from the bottom up there are a lot a lot a lot of features so let's get started starting at the bottom it's got my all-time favorite four pasture wheels which makes this move easy peasy you guys know me, I absolutely love the idea that you can move your grill around. And the front two wheels are locking. Along with that, we have a magnet up here, just really quick. And you can actually put this on the bottom and adjust your level. How do you know it's level? Well, they've come up with that idea themselves. Inside here, you got a little uh, magnet and you can put it on there for your levelness. We're not gonna do that today. Holy smokes. Is it? We're getting close because once we start filming, see how my deck's running this way? When I turn the griddle around, I want the stuff funneled towards my gre grease trap, okay? But there's a little level for you that way in case you have to move it around as much as I do. You've always got a good home for it. I really like that. Second thing, huge face plate. Rise above is kind of like their tag. Uh, the propane tank is behind it. It secures in very well. I like it because once you come from the back part of the griddle, you got plenty of open space back here. The tank is a breeze to get to. You got this metal uh, thing that locks it down and it sits right inside of here. Since we're already on the back and I don't have to move it again, I'm just gonna show you the grease trap system. I think I don't, this might be over, over thought of and over designed. I kind of understand the idea. I'm only assuming. They put a face plate up here so you can keep it outdoors so when it rains, the rain doesn't get inside your grease trap. Although it looks like plenty of moisture or critters can still get inside from here. This is spring loaded, but you have to take it off. And then you have to pull the pin. And with two hands, I'm just not sure what you're supposed to do with it if the grease is in there. And then you can take your grease bucket out or whatever. This little ledge right here fits underneath the ledge. Just like that. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure a lot of engineering went behind it. Just, I think it might have been over, uh, over thought of. It's not, it's, it's maybe my least favorite grease trap. <laughs> Imagine doing all that when they're, when it's half full of grease. Yeah. And I don't even know by the looks of it, you have to do that to remove the grease cup. You can't just take the grease cup out of it. So, uh, not a big fan of that at all. So it goes Unless I'm just doing it wrong. You think you'd be able to hinge it here? and take the grease trap off, but you can't hinge it because it's stuck. That's how it hangs, so. But that's my personal opinion. Only three people in this world care about my opinion. My dog and my two daughters. <laughs> Your wife does <laughs> All right, it's got four burners. They are battery operated. So you just turn it on, click their igniter, and there you go. You got peep holes that you can see which burner is on. You have side shelves. Both of these are fully collapsible. You guys know I love that, obviously, because when you're dealing with storage, it's a big plus, especially when you're limited on 
um, space. It has a built-in wind guard system because the griddle top itself fits in nicely, just like the Traeger does into its own housing. And there you go, there's a first peek at the wall-to-wall -wall griddling. Eight burners. Cannot wait to show you that feature. I can't wait to test it out myself. Right here is the front part of the grease trap. Um, whether or not it's a good idea or not, this is silicone. And this is supposed to be like a spatula scraper. So when you get junk on your spatula, you just take it off here and the debris falls into the grease trap. For that itself, that's probably a good idea. Working our way up, you guys see this neat little contraption here. It works two different ways, okay? It's stowed out of the way, so you don't, you can just keep it on there and leave your dome, your lid on there. Or these springs come undone. And then in here, you got holes just like that. And now you can elevate your food off and then you can still use it while your lid is closed. So like a warming shelf. Yes. Okay. I kind of like the feature both ways. I like it out of the way. I've also seen another brand at Academy before and I felt like it was just too in the way. I don't know if it comes, I don't know anything about it. I didn't, I'm just telling you. I like the fact that most of it is sitting back and so you're still able to use most of your griddle surface and it looks like it doesn't get in the way. I like that. I really like that feature right there. I'm gonna go ahead and stow it because I'm gonna end up seizing this today. Just like that. Extra large capacity of rear grease management plus utensil clean off, we talked about that. One of the biggest, nicest, most genuine things I can say about this griddle is the fact that they actually say the hood is, um, uh, insulated and you can use the hood while your griddle's on okay matter of fact they recommend it you can heat up your griddle faster you can control the heat like this you can use the hood while it's on i think that's a major factor when you're talking about the price range of these griddles when um when you're looking at all the features that it offers i i just think that's that's fantastic a uh, very nice color combination i'm a big fan of it um i like really the the front handles um stainless steel on top not a fan of that because it's just more cleaning that has to be done. You can see fingerprints. It is not the Finger. stainless steel that's fingerprint proof. Yep. I just want to put mine. Even then when you try to. You know what I could put on here that you could look at later? Oh, geez. But no, look, I'm showing them. Even oh. when you wipe it off with just like, that's my t-shirt. That's a good use of your t-shirt. I know. It, it still shows. These are utensil hangers. And they fit in here very easy. Just like that. Okay. And there's but, one on the other side. And there is one on the other side. But the cool feature is this griddle top has two little holes in there. And then this acts as your griddle top holder. So what we're going to do, we have to set the phone down so we can film it. Because this thing is heavy. It's heavy. I'll get to that in a second. As you can imagine, I think the hype and the buildup of this griddle is based on this technology right here. This is the eight burner system. Okay. There's four individual burners. The burners are spread out a little bit wider, which is probably why you have more even heat. And you can control which burners are off and on, along with you can use half the burners. One thing I thought of before I bought the griddle was how neat it would be to turn this one on, this one on, this one on, and this one on. The reality is now that I've got it, that's not true. I, I didn't know that. That's 100% my fault. But that's why we do this video. So if you guys see this video, now you know. I will say all four burners can be put on low or all four burners can turn on here in the front and then you can open the valve up and then it'll register the gas will come back in the back and you can turn this one on so you can't turn the back one on and not the front one so i want to demonstrate really quick it's going to be very difficult to see because of the the coloring we're just going to use this burner right here for example turn the knob ignite it as you can see only this section right ooh, only this section right here is on. The first one. Okay, can you see that? Let me see what it's where... on the top knot right there. Okay. Because it shows you right here and the manual is very detailed. Okay. Without doing anything else, all you have to do is turn the knob to the second position. Now it unleashes the gas. And there we go. Now both burners are lit. It's got a little heat exhaust right here. I'm sure because you've got it on the back. 
and you've got it on the front as well. So I'm gonna be interested to see how much heat comes up through here. On the Traeger, remember that grease trap was super hot, especially when you leave your hand over that for a, period, a long period, a uh, longer amount of time. Considering the grease trap is in the back, then we have no wasted space. So when you're talking about left to right, up and down heating, that's very important. I am going to lift this griddle plate up. I'm not going to weigh it. I'm just telling you now, it's the heaviest griddle plate we've ever touched. It's, it's, <laughs> it's extremely heavy. Yeah. It's extremely heavy. It probably, you can man, manhandle it if you want to with two or three people or one single person to lift it up uh, to put it together yourself. That's up to you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Damn. As you can see, it's got the L brackets in the back for welding. And right in the middle in the front, it's got the wind guard right here at the very front. So we're going to set this back down, and we're going to lift it on there like we're supposed to, so I don't mess anything up. I just wanted to show you that. I think as the griddle game and the popularity of griddles grow and grow, so do the idea of transportation, the ability to take on the go, and this masters that. Underneath here, we've already put it together. You don't have to put these together, but you might as well go ahead. Let's see. Right, yeah. These little brackets right here are your feet. You've got these little screws. You can undo these screws on the outside. and they will allow you to lift this whole griddle off and then your base stays. And then you can use this with your feet. So you could put it on a picnic table. And the feet are adjustable as well. They've got a little locking pin and a screw here. I think it's a fantastic idea. The feet feel solid. Um, I would encourage anybody doing this to remove the griddle plate because the griddle plate is the heaviest part of this whole system and uh, moving something that wide into a truck bed, an SUV or a flat bed or anything, you know, you could probably bend your metal at the bottom. It is sturdy, but I would recommend removing the griddle plate, moving this unit in one, um, and then putting it together. The last thing, when putting together, you notice these brackets are hinged. Uh, you can undo the screw just like you would this screw, and then your bottom, folds up it doesn't fold up great like all the way completely flat but it does give you less space and sometimes you know when you're talking about a couple feet to save space some people like that it's a really good feature design there the last thing we're gonna go over and this is where this whole griddle gets tricky because it now it takes it to a different level based on just an average turn it on and go i'm not a scientist i'm just a dude okay <laughs> a dude yep underneath here this is like advanced griddling. Yep. We have a propane valve regulator. If you press it down, see how it's up? That's your 9.5. When you press it down, that's your 11. Based on your manual, it recommends you cooking like this more often than the 9.5. Um, the terminologies, I'm not really a big fan of. But just to give you an idea, when you're using the 9.5, it's supposed to regulate the, the flow of the griddle lower and in terms reach a lower temperature while doing so. All right, lastly, I just wanna give my overall first impressions. Um, not bad. The shelves do seem kind of light. That doesn't mean that they won't do a good job. They are smaller, especially since you don't have a shelf anywhere. So the side space, um, especially when you're comparing this, the, the easiest way to do this is to compare it to the Traeger as of now because the price point. We can compare it to any griddle we want to. But with the Traeger, the shelves were extremely solid. The whole thing was well built. Every piece that you put on there felt like it was high quality. Some of the things I do feel like these shelves are just very, very flimsy. But that doesn't mean they won't do a good job, right? Um, we'll see how hot they get considering how hot this griddle is supposed to get. Uh, we know on the Pit Boss, the side shelves got extremely hot. Um, hot enough where you wouldn't want to keep your hand there for too long. Um, so we're going to test that out. So with that, we're going to start the seasoning process. Um, and see if we can get those temperatures dialed in. Just like in all griddles, first things first, hot soapy water. I'm filling the griddle right now. It reminds me a lot, and I mean a lot of the Traeger. Very rough, but the rough is even. There's a big difference, especially when you're around the griddles as much as we are with the different brands, the different types of griddle surfaces. Um, we're not gonna sand this down. I think 
in my mind, you might be better off not sanding. I don't, think you're gonna, I don't think you're gonna hurt anything. Grill bricking or sanding just to knock off the high points. This is a, so just hot soaking water. Obviously you have no idea what kind of oils they ship this with. The oils on there just help um, protect it from rusting while storage and shipping. But that's not the oil you wanna season with. We talk about that. This is not gonna be a seasoning video. Um, I know dead minimal, we're looking at four coats. We're gonna show you the end process between each coat. And then at the end, uh, after it's seasoning, I'm gonna let you know what I think. couple things we noticed during the seasoning process these are typically the things you never know when you're just doing a review versus actually getting hands-on experience this thing gets way too dang hot like way too hot we were cruising like basically 680 on high i've adjusted the burners down after the very first seasoning and it's been on low ever since it's still cruising about 600 um even pegged all the way on low now granted both burners are on and we are still in the seasoning phase so I want the even heat distribution, but we're pushing about 600 to 620, even on low. With that being said, everything is hot. Everything is hot. This front plate is hot. It's so hot that this is starting to come off or maybe it just wasn't on there great. Maybe once it cools down, it'll be better. The shelves are hot. The sides are here. The sides are here. These sides are extremely hot. And then the grease trap in the back, maybe I just don't do it enough or I don't even think about it, but the heat is pouring out from here. And so even this is extremely hot. I mean, I'm talking about like, like, like griddle hot, hot. It's not 500 degrees. Matter of fact. We actually moved it back from the house because we were afraid of all the heat that it would damage our TV. I think the instruction said three feet. Yeah, I mean, even the grease cup is 200, 180 degrees. 300 degrees on the inside of the grease truck. Oh, geez. That means your grease is going to be boiling in there. I mean, even the handle is 200 degrees, 230 degrees. I don't know. I mean, I've heard these things get hot, but just to let you know, that's why we do these videos. And people complain about whether or not, you know, our information. But we just try to give you the fair information you do with what you want. So we're gonna go in about the last, I'm gonna season it one more time. I like the way the coat came out. You can tell that we got some really good color on there. Um, and we'll finish the video up. We just got done seasoning. The griddle's calming down. It's probably like in the 400s, maybe in the high 300s, which is too high for eggs. But I always like to do a simple egg test, a little butter. And then we'll see right away. That's a well-seasoned griddle. Um, I can I can just tell the way the eggs hit the griddle. I can promise you that's seasoned perfectly. All right. Um, some things of note. I just want to throw caution to the wind the very first day we got it. Today is the first day we played with it. I don't know at what temperatures. I'm sure each oil out there that we decide to use, avocado, grapeseed, canola, um, vegetable, olive, whatever oil you decide to use, eventually it's going to have a flash point temperature. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what those temperatures are. This griddle gets too hot. It's like a Ferrari in a neighborhood. Like, yeah, it might go 300 miles per hour, but how often do you need it? So just caution the wind. We're gonna cook with it, see if we enjoy it. But I'm telling you right now, this griddle gets extremely hot and I think it's nonsense. So hot that it's sometimes, when you're standing here as a, as a just a human being, it's just hard to breathe the, the hot air. Like it's too dang hot. That don't mean it can't cook on low. And that just means that maybe the, the temperature fluctuations are just incredible. But to me, it's too hot. So we'll see. She actually was filming me, and she had trouble next standing next to the griddle. I, I was standing. We moved it out from yeah. the TV because I was worried it was going to melt my damn TV. Then we're worried about, I mean, I'm telling you, at some point, oil will combust at a certain temperature when you put it on the griddle if you're playing around with it. Caution to the wind. I'm just telling you. You guys see how it slides around? So that's a good seasoned griddle right there. I'm just gonna show you some of the points, say 300 to 750. You know, when I first was looking at it before I even got it, I thought, wow, 750 seems pretty cool. I'd love to see what I can cook on 750 after getting the griddle up. 
my dang paper towels for the first time. I know they can do it at a lower temperature. I'm not saying that. For the first time I ever started smoking right here. And I was worried that they were going to start combusting and catch on fire because the griddle was so dang hot the second time that we put the oil down that um, I was worried that my paper towels were going to catch fire. Although we traditionally do a cheese steak, something I've been craving since we've done it a long time ago and I wanted to redo the video is a chopped cheese. We haven't done one in a very, very, very long time. Kind of pretty much the same idea. The beef, the onions, it's got that fat in there be able to get that bread on there. I'm looking forward to it. So the first cook up will be chopped cheese. Then of course, on our first cook, we'll throw down the bread. We'll show you guys the bread test. I think I've kind of started a, a firestorm with it. And it really wasn't about bad or good griddles. It's just a visual. Everybody wants to know what temperature I'm cooking at. Well, if all the knobs are on low and you've got a hundred degree difference on the griddle, then why would I tell you 350 if one side of the griddle is 480, right? This doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'll put the toast on there just for a visual. So as a beginner or a newbie or someone that's not traditionally used to griddle cooking, you can understand your sweet spots visually. And that's how I learn is more visual. In closing really quick, um, I think today has gone about as high and low as expected uh, or unexpected. I was not initially wowed as much as what I thought, but it still had tons of potential. I think it still has tons of potential, but I'm very, very, very taken back and or shaken by the just a the sheer heat that it produces. I think it's just something that's unexpected. Maybe it's something that you get used to and maybe there's people out there that absolutely want this and that's what these videos are about. Um, like I said, we're about to get that first cook. I'm not gonna take any more of your time. Um, just basically, you know, impress, unimpressed, impress, unimpressed. So we're just gonna see how the temperature goes uh, on our first cook. And then ultimately from there, put us through its paces and see if it really, 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 really is worth the price tag. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so because of you were able to do things like this. If you guys are interested, we have the Griddle Group on Facebook is where ironically, we talk about griddles. And it doesn't matter which griddle you have, it's your griddle community. We throw smoking videos in there as well because those two combinations are fantastic. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends.